Minutes. We're joined by Melissa Armo, who is the founder and owner of the stock Swoosh. Melissa, great to have you here with us this morning. Thanks for taking the time. We've seen a two-day rally on the markets coupled with some highs that we haven't encountered since March. So what happened here? And from your perspective, where might this momentum continue? Well, I think it's a pivotal week for markets because we're so close to the highs right now that if we don't make new highs by the end of the week, which we only have three more days left in the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then I doubt that we will before the end of the year. We have a lot of economic data on tap this week, and that will definitely affect the markets. But other than that, there's really nothing else that will negatively or positively affect the market this week. You're right. I heard you say we sold off because of the Omicron, but the fact is it could have been an overreaction because we've been up pretty much uh, pretty big since yesterday. So I'm a little bit surprised myself, not surprised about the overreaction, but surprised how much we bounced back. It could have been Apple. Apple did make new highs. But when I look at everything else, when I look at the banks, when I look at the large banks, JPM, Goldman Sachs, when I look at Amazon, when I look at Google, a lot of those stocks really don't look that great and they're not near the highs. So you say, why did the market rally yesterday? Why is the market up this morning? There's really no explanation, but you could look at the entire backdrop of this economy really in the last year in 2021 and say, with all the people still unemployed and all the job numbers, uh, the job openings that we have, why has the market continued to be so bullish this year? Sometimes the backdrop of the economy does not match up to how the market reacts. And so you mentioned the economic data that we're going to be watching out for this week. What most notably is in focus for you? Well, really, the number today, uh, we're going to see and find out how many uh, job openings there are. And if that number is worse than expected, if it's higher than expected, that could be a problem. Because, again, we want people to go back to work. There's plenty of jobs available, but we still don't have everybody back to work. Part of it could be the implementation, uh, implementation of these vaccine mandates and people are choosing not to go back to work. Part of it, I think, could be some of this economic stimulus the administration has put out that's continued. For example, the child care extra bonus. People are still getting that at least to the end of 2021. And I think people may wait until the beginning of 2022 to start looking for jobs again and go back to work because they're receiving government stimulus. And unfortunately, I think that has had a negative effect on, on uh motivating people to go back to work as fast as we need it. And the economy really does need people to go back to work. You notice yourself, I'm sure as a consumer, if you call sometimes certain companies, you're on hold for so long now, people just are not fully back to work yet. And so we do know another uh, number of companies, excuse me, um, who have planned to have employees return to the office next month. They've continued to push out some of those time frames now, now starting to push those dates out even further. Uh, what do you believe the impact to the employment situation may be there as well? Well, I think it's terrible for cities, big cities like New York. Uh, you know, you don't have the hustle and bustle back in the city like normal, even though, again, it's the end of 2021, back 19, 20 months into this, we're still not back to normal here. It's not good. Google is one of the big employers that has decided that people can wait and they're going to wait and see and make a decision in early 2022. But of course, this keeps getting pushed off. COVID was March of 2020. We're almost to the two year mark. So March of 2022 will be two years since the market had that massive sell off and we had the shutdown. And it's hard to believe really that people are not full back to the office yet. And again, this affects productivity. I do believe it affects people's motivation while it's convenient to work from home. And some people's personalities can handle it and they do better from home if they're a type A personality. Some people's can, and I do think it, it affects production, but it's bad for cities because these companies are gonna let the commercial leases ride out and not renew. Typically the five-year commercial lease, 10-year commercial lease for these for these re for these places in the city. Mm -hmm. And again, LA is another one too, Chicago. Please people are not gonna renew the commercial leases if they don't have the workforce. Or at the very least, they're not gonna renew the same office space. And that's bad then for real estate, for commercial sure. real estate. And I do is I think it affects also small businesses around. You're not going into the office in New York City, you're not going to get your bagel, your coffee, you're not dropping off your dry cleaning, you're not going to right. gym at lunchtime. So all of these things, it's a trickle down effect that affects right. many, many uh, small businesses in these large cities. Melissa, I only have about 30 seconds left. We've talked retail at length in the past. I'd love to get your take, though, on a name in Stitch Fix who reported earnings yesterday and particularly on the forecast and their guidance moving lower, notably this morning. Well, that's another
another one. I think that sells off today. It broke the $20 mark. It's, it's flirting with around 19 right now this morning. That's another one where, again, why are people going to go purchase clothes and buy clothes and think about these types of things if they're not going out as much, if they're not going to the office space? So a company like that, I think, has been affected negatively uh, by the slowing to get back to work at the offices. Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh, joining us this morning. Melissa, always appreciate the time, and thanks for joining us on Wake Up with Cheddar.